Welcome to this video on Organizational Purpose and Planning, Part 1. My name is Scott Vaughn. I'm with Community Development Unit of Alberta Culture, Multiculturalism and Status of Women. Before we begin, I would like to mention that the goal of our board development video series is for board members of nonprofit organizations to have the basic knowledge, skills and tools to be successful in their work. We realize that some of you are not board members and that's fine but we want you to be aware that the information, concepts, and ideas presented are from board member perspectives. Also, the information presented here is aimed at introductory level or refresher for board members to ensure they have the base level understanding of board concepts and principles needed to successfully do their work. We do have other resources that we can share with you, such as our toolkit. There's a link in the description of this video to our toolkit that provides additional resources and links we think are helpful for you and your nonprofit organization as you tackle your governance issues. Included in this toolkit is a copy of the slides we use in this video and all the videos in our board development video series. You can also hit the subscribe button down below and turn the notification on to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notification about our upcoming videos. The last thing I wanna mention before we get going is that in this video, we are not providing advice. The information offered in this video and the related materials are not intended to constitute legal advice, the rendering of the legal concepts, consulting, or other professional services of any kind. We simply want to share with you information that we think will be helpful for board members as you navigate your organization through its governance and operations. By the end of this video, you'll be able to explain how the organizational purpose and planning is part of the role of the board in governance of the organization. You'll be able to explain the link between foundational statements, why they're important, and how they support the work of the organization and the board in organizational planning, as well as identify the different plans that organizations may have and how these plans relate to the strategic plan. So let's get going with our organizational purpose. At the center of the organization is the board of directors. The board has the highest level decision making in the organization. The board basically decides what work will be done in the organization. Only the board has the authority and the responsibility to make decisions on behalf of the organization. So what does the board do? The first thing the board does is to ensure that these four key roles are fulfilled. Now that you see the first role the board is defining and advancing the organization's purpose is very related to the topic of this video. But what does it mean? It means that you and your fellow board members need to define and understand what the purpose of the organization is. Why is it created? Where does it wanna go? What's your goal from having, it, having this organization? And then you need to ensure that the organization fulfills that purpose. This means that you make sure that you have a purpose and also guide the organization towards that purpose. The next one is ensuring, developing, and conserving resources of the organization. This is about financial and human resources and organization's property. It's basically answering the question of what financial, human, and property resources the organization has. How can the organization use those resources? And how can the organization preserve them? The next key role is providing oversight to the organization's affairs. This is all about board members actively engaging in the work of the organization. You need to understand and find out more and more about what is happening in the organization and why, how it's operating and how the board can help improve it. The last one is engagement. This one is really about relationships. Engagement could be an outreach with external stakeholders and it could be with internal stakeholders like your staff and volunteers, but regardless, it is one of the four key roles of the board to engage in and manage outreach with stakeholders. These four key roles describe what the board should be thinking about. They describe the roles that are necessary for the board to be involved in. Now the board also has seven key responsibility and these seven responsibilities describe the actions that help the board successfully fulfill their four key roles. Our board development video series is based on these seven responsibilities. Not surprisingly, the first of the seven responsibilities is organizational purpose and planning. So what is organizational purpose and planning? In very simple words, it is understanding the vision, mission, and values of your organization. 
organizational purpose and planning is where, where do you want your organization to be and how are you going to get there? The vision, mission, and value statements of your organization basically describe this for your organization. So the board needs to define the vision, mission, and values of the organization. And based on those mission, value, vision, and value statements, they can create a plan for the organization to define how the organization will get to where it wants to be. We'll be discussing organizational planning in the second part of this video. The other six responsibilities I'll briefly go over now so you're aware of them in relationship to organizational purpose and planning. But we recommend that you watch our full board development video series to know of these roles and responsibilities in full detail. Legal responsibilities. We do a couple of videos on understanding your legal landscape and understanding your legal responsibilities. But in summary, part of your legal responsibilities is understanding your external and internal rules and how they affect your organization. This includes what obligations you have according to your incorporation legislation and written laws and what obligations you have according to your internal rules in your objects, bylaws, policies, and procedures. Basically knowing what liability is and how to reduce the possibility of it as well. Another responsibility, creating an ethical culture and practicing good governance is your third responsibility. Ethical culture is understanding how you want to behave as an organization and how you work with each other. It's the board that sets that example. The next one is managing risk and liability. Well, this responsibility is understanding what sorts of risk your organization is exposed to and how they affect your organization, and then taking the steps to manage those risks so it is less likely to happen and reduce your liability. Financial responsibilities. This is about knowing what the financial activities of your organization are and ensuring they reflect the work that the organization does. Demonstrating leadership and working as a team. This is knowing about how the board members and the board as a whole demonstrate leadership and ensure they are working well as a team. And the last one is relationship management. Relationship management is about how the board can ensure that it is cultivating good relationships within the board, within the organization, and among its stakeholders. Now, with the four key roles of the board and the seven responsibilities of the board in mind, you know what needs to be done. But how will you approach doing that work? Organizational culture, mindset, and skills. That's how the board approaches and does these four roles and seven responsibilities. You can see that is like a border that goes around the entire organization. In board roles and responsibilities video part two, we explain the principles of good governance and the qualities and skills of the board. And they're basically what organizational culture, mindset, and skills are all about. Together, these three elements help the culture of the organization and define how board members approach their work and how they want to relate to each other. We call this whole graphic organizational design because it is basically a broad overview of how the organization works from a board perspective. Now you may see that the first role and the first responses of ability of the board are specifically about organizational purpose and planning. But remember that these roles and responsibilities are not mutually exclusive, meaning they are related to each other and they overlap. For example, you cannot have active oversight without properly defining the purpose of your organization. But in this video, we are directly referring to the first one, which is define and advance the organization's purpose. And the board fulfills that role through organizational purpose and planning, which is their first responsibility. So what is the organizational purpose? It, in simple words, it is the direction that the organization wants to go towards. And where is that? You probably have all heard about it. It is in the vision, mission, and value statements of the organization. It's basically the foundational statements of the organization. The organizational purpose is expressed in the foundational statements. The board uses vision, mission, and values to create the specific goals of the organization and to guide the organization through its work. So in simple words, the board needs to define 
the purpose of the organization to know where the organization is going. We will discuss these foundational statements in more details in part two of this video, but I will talk about how they are related to organizational purpose and planning. Now, what is the link between foundational statements or organizational purpose and organizational planning? How an organization achieves its mission depends on having a set of more specific goals or objectives. So the board sets the overall purpose and direction through their vision, mission, and value statements. But organizational plans such as the strategic plan and or operational plan have the details of how the organization will move towards that vision, mission, and values. So through foundational statements, the board defines the purpose of the organization and where the organization is going. And through organizational planning, the board creates a plan to explain how the organization gets there. So in the operational plans, where do foundational statements come in? Well, first, many organizational plans, including the strategic plans, have the vision, mission, and values up front in the plan. Because these foundational statements, as it is clear from the name, form the foundation that guide the goals and activities of the organization all through. Foundational statements also help keep an organization on track once the plan is in place. So if the organization is not on track with its activities, you can look at the foundational statements and see where you're going off track. One of the most challenging tasks for nonprofit leaders is to be very clear about the goals of the organization and what priority each goal should have at any given time. To know where you're going in the, in the right direction towards your purpose, you must constantly ask these questions uh, from yourselves and your followers. What outcomes do we need to achieve to make a positive change within our mission and, and mandate? To achieve these outcomes, what services do we want to provide and to whom and at what cost? How will we obtain and maintain the resources we need to provide these services? How will we measure our effectiveness and efficiency in carrying out these activities? How will we demonstrate and report on the impact of the outcomes? As a board member, by asking these questions, you'll know where, that whether you are on the right track or not. As we said, the board will set the purpose of the organization and it will guide the organization towards that purpose using planning. As you can see in this image, we have several levels of planning in an organization. We have the strategic plan that you may have heard of, or you, or you may even have in your own organization, but we also have business plans, we have operational plans, we have functional plans, we have program plans, project plans, and many other types of plans. We only discuss strategic plan in part two of this video because that's the highest level of organizational planning and it defines the overall strategic direction of your organization. From that, the other levels of organizational planning, again, the business plan, the operational plan, the program plan and the like, align with the strategic plan to further define and guide the organization through its work. So now we can bring together the organization that the design that we just walked you through uh, see the graphic with the four board roles, seven responsibilities, organizational culture above. And now tie it into the specific purpose, strategic direction, and work of the organization identified in the strategic plan and all its components, which we'll be going into next. The strategic plan defines the details of how you fulfill your roles and responsibilities as a board member in the governance of the organization. This is the work you're gonna be doing as a board member and as an organization, all outlined in the strategic plan and all towards advancing the purpose of the organization. Remember, one of the key roles of the board is to define and advance the purpose of the organization. And one of the key responsibilities is to set the direction for the organization, which it defines and carries out through organizational planning via the strategic plan. This brings us to the end of our video on organizational purpose and planning. Part one, thank you for watching. Our contact information is on the slide and they are in the toolkit as well. If you are in Alberta and you have a question or you need further information or like to request these services, you can contact us through email and phone. You can also access our website to know more about our resources and services. And also if you wanna be informed of our future services and resources, 
you could add your email address to our subscription form and you'll receive information about our services and resources as they become available. The link to the subscription form is the description of the video as well. Thank you for your attention. Take care, stay healthy, and always remember that our communities have so much more because of everything you do. Thank you all and bye for now.